Welcome back to one of my Mega Wang Crazy Electronics projects for the Commodore 64. My new board has arrived from PCBWay. I'm really, really happy with the way that this board has been assembled by PCBWay in a very timely manner. I'm just having a look at the board here before I start doing any crazy things like plugging it in. The other side of the board well, because it's mostly surface mount, there's actually not too much sol through hole sol soldering on this board. I've got a few debug headers, and of course there's the power jack, and there's also the uh, through hole pins there for the uh, dip connector, which is going to be for the FTDI USB interface to slot into. And of course there's the uh, headers as well for the wider signal line path for the U uh, for the Commodore 64 user port to plug into there and then up at the top left is the old user port interface out header which is where the whole mega wang board stack plugs into so let's turn it on let's just see okay 51.3 watts is about right for this current whole board stack with the extra USB interface plugged in. I can see that the, U uh, that the video decoder there is showing that it's getting video signal. So let's see what we get now. Now we should have, that's great. That means actually that nothing is shorting out and that the Mega Wang video board is generating um, its you know, power on random video output. Let's turn on the Commodore 64 because I've got uh, a cartridge image already on this Commodore 64, which will hopefully output Shadow of the Beast. So it's a nice little demo of the capabilities of the Mega Wang Turbo Edition video and audio hardware. But it basically proves that this RAM expansion now, which is sitting in between the video hardware and the Commodore 64, is not interrupting with the default operation of the video hardware, which is great. Now, the whole point about this RAM expansion is that the RAM is accessible via the USB, uh, not the USB, the user port, sorry. Um, also, the RAM expansion is going to be able to interface with a USB connection to, say, for example, a PC via the FTDI board to allow a PC to populate the RAM because there's two megabytes of RAM on this board. The whole point about this is that, is that the onboard RAM expansion is accessible through the user port. This means that uh, the cartridge port is still free. But it also means that the Commodore 64 CPU can do relatively fast optimized transfers from the user port to the C64's memory and also back to the expansion RAM. Now I'm just testing there that the emulated code works for interfacing with the emulated uh, extended expansion user port RAM. So now I'm running the same code on the Commodore 64 and I can immediately see that the RAM write and the RAM read tests have worked. Let's see if I can scroll this. Ah, look at that. It works first time. So the great thing about this RAM expansion board is that it has an addressable start. It has a start address, but it also has a row length counter. So say, for example, every 40 bytes that the Commodore 64 copies, it will then add on an extra count for the for the rest of the row length. This allows me in this demonstration to have a massive 1024 by 1024 character screen with color data that can be copied by the Commodore 64 via the user port all in one frame. Now, because the Commodore 64 is chasing the raster beam down the screen, it means that I don't need double buffering or anything like that if I want to copy the entire screen all in one frame, I can. It doesn't leave a lot of frame time left, to be honest, because you're copying 2K, but that's okay, it's a demo. 
This is a good first test of the board. There's many more tests to go. I'm going to test the USB RAM writing functionality in the next video. And then after that, probably finally test the fast DMA access, which is where the expansion RAM can be sent extremely quickly without blocking the Commodore 64 to the Mega Wang expansion hardware. This will allow me to use the Commodore 64 to populate the expansion RAM with data and then send it over via DMA without the Commodore 64 needing to do any extra work. It doesn't need to wait, it doesn't need to pause, it can just keep on calculating in the next frame. And this will optimize the transfers to the video hardware. So thank you very much for watching. If you like these kind of crazy electronics videos, for the Commodore 64, then please do consider liking or subscribing to my channel and a super thanks is also very much appreciated. Take care, have a great day or evening or night, wherever you are.